I call Craig Foss. I move Mr. that the question be now put. I call Phil Twyford. Dying minutes of the committee stages, sir, and it's fitting. It is fitting that we should finish these committee stages responding to an excruciating speech by Jackie Deans. We've, board, we've fini we're finishing as we started. Point of order, Jackie Dean. Thank you, Mr Chair. I'd be grateful if the member would address me by, by my correct title, which is Jackie Dean. I, I apologise. I'm sure the uh, member's taken that on Mr board. Chair, I apologise yeah, for that. I should say we were responding to an excruciating speech from the member Jackie Dean. Um, and uh, she's the member, sir, she's the member who uh, cannot understand that the fact that we are voting against the odious fourth part of this bill, which gives part the minister... Six. Part uh, I'm, six. I'm getting to it, sir, I'm getting to it. She cannot understand why we would vote against that fourth part. She cannot understand why we would take a conscience vote or a personal vote on the alcohol provisions in this bill. Because the members on this side of the House, unlike the member Jackie Dean, uh, haven't put their brain into neutral uh, while they've been debating this bill, sir. And uh, uh, the best uh, argument that she can come up with is that we don't like rugby. Woo-hoo! So, sir, um, this, uh, this sixth part is, is interesting because it reflects, it reflects, sir... How just how uh, well thought through much of this bill is. The detail and the thought that's gone into this sixth part is extraordinary, sir. And I want to draw the House's attention to uh, section 89, part 5A. No detail has been overlooked in this bill. No detail has been overlooked. A notice or document is deemed to have been received as follows if sent electronically when acknowledged by the recipient or when an automated delivery receipt has been uh, received by the, resender, by the sender. If a notice in 5B or document is required to be served or delivered on or by a particular working day, it must be served or delivered by 4pm on that day, sir. If it arrives after 4pm, it's deemed to have been received on the following day. Now, this is extraordinary. No detail has been overlooked. And yet, and yet, part four of this bill hands over to the Rugby World Cup Minister, Murray McCulley, hands over to Murray McCulley the extraordinary powers to override the recommendations of the eminent uh, appointed members of the Rugby World Cup Authority. Some of so all of the detail, all of the thought that's gone into this bill could count for nothing because Murray McCulley, the Rugby World Cup Minister, can completely disregard all of the thought that's been gone into setting up the systems, the structures, the procedures, uh, for the Rugby World Cup Authority. And that, sir, is why the Labour members of this House will ultimately vote against this bill. Not because, as Jackie Dean thinks, we don't like rugby, or we're unpatriotic, or we don't care about the success of the Rugby World Cup. We do. Members on this side have been abundantly clear, sir, that we support the Rugby World Cup. We want it to be a fantastic success for New Zealand. We want it to be uh, an unforgettable moment for all New Zealanders to savour the beautiful game. But, sir, we will not, we will not countenance bad law, bad uh, systems that are being put in place by this government to completely disregard the normal conventions of accountable government and hand over to Murray McCulley the unfettered power to disregard the members and the advice of the Rugby World Cup Authority, sir. And that's why, in spite of the sublime, elegant detail that's contained in part six of this bill, that, that, that say, sir, that if a, if, a, if a notice is received after 4pm, that it's deemed to have been received the following that day. Apply to Murray McCulley, In spite of the beauty, the elegance, the simplicity of part six, sir, Labor will vote against this bill unless the government, and when we haven't given up hope that the government might see sense finally uh, before this bill is passed. Uh, well, some, some of my colleagues have given up hope, but I, sir, have not. I, sir, have not. I have an open mind and a good heart, and, and, and I live in hope that I live in hope 
that the members on that side of the House will reignite and reawaken their commitment to the conventions of accountable government and not give Murray McCulley these extraordinary powers that are contained in the fourth part of this bill. Sir.